All right, our next method is the physical measure method. Recall earlier that I said that we could somehow physically measure our items either by weight, volume, or some other type of measure and use that as our allocation um, basis. All right, so we are going to use the same scenario, but we're gonna apply the physical measure method, which allocates joint cost to joint products produced during the accounting period on the basis of a comparable physical measure, such as the relative weight, quantity, or volume at the split off point. Now, typically, we are talking about including only the joint product outputs in the weighting computation. Um, we typically do not add in uh, the weights or the measure of the outputs with no sales value. Um, in the text, it gives an example. Uh, what about the dirt in the gold mining process? We are not going to be using the dirt in the calculation for figuring out how much to allocate to gold and how much to allocate to the dirt. All right, so again, typically we're only using the joint product outputs in this weighting uh, computation. Okay, so again, we're still using the dairy processing company. They purchased 110,000 gallons of raw milk from farms. They process the raw milk into cream and liquid skim. They sell the cream at $8 a gallon. They sell the liquid skim at $4 per gallon. Again, here's our data set. We are trying to figure out how to allocate out the joint costs that have been incurred up to the split off point of $400,000. We are going to use gallons in this particular instance. Now again, recall that we started out with 110,000 of raw milk, but we're not gonna use 110,000 gallons in our calculation. We are going to use the gallons produced. We're not even going to use the gallons sold in our allocation calculations. All right, so we're going to use gallons produced. So we produced 25,000 of cream and we produced 75,000 of liquid skim. So again, we're using those weights. We are going to take the 25,000 gallons of cream and the 75,000 gallons of uh, liquid skim for a total of 100,000 gallons, and we're gonna calculate the weight. 25,000 over 100,000 is 25%, and 75,000 over 100,000 is the remaining 75%. We are then gonna take those weights based on the physical measures and multiply those times the joint cost in order to get the allocation to go to cream and the allocation to go to liquid skim. So 25% of 400,000 is 100,000 and the remaining 75% is 300,000. All right, for a total allocation of 400,000. Again, we are going to calculate this down to a per gallon basis. Recall that we've got to figure out not only the cost of goods sold for our income statement, but we need to calculate the ending inventory for those gallons of cream and liquid skim that are still in inventory at the end of the period. All right, so if you take 100,000 and divide it by the 25,000 uh, gallons of cream, that's $4 per gallon, and 300,000 divided by 75,000 is also $4 per gallon, okay? So it's same uh, price per gallon when we're using this physical measures example. Revenues on our income statement, we only sold 20,000 gallons, again at $8 per gallon equals 160,000. And we only sold 30,000 gallons of the 75,000 gallons that we produced of the liquid skim. So 30,000 gallons at $4 per gallon equals 120,000 in revenues. We've seen this calculation already. If we total those up, it's $280,000 in revenues. 
for the cost of goods sold. We have already calculated out our uh, production cost up here at the top, and we can bring those down here. It's 100,000 and 300,000. We based that off of the physical measures and did the weights, 25% and 75% against the joint cost. We need to deduct from those production costs what is still here in ending inventory so that we can calculate the cost of goods sold. So we still have 5,000 gallons left in inventory of the cream, just like we've talked about already once before, because we produced 25,000 gallons and we sold 20,000. So 5,000 are still here at four dollars per gallon that we calculated already means our ending inventory for cream is 20 grand and then we have 45,000 gallons left of the 75,000 gallons produced because 30,000 were sold and those 45,000 gallons in ending inventory of liquid skim at four dollars per gallon equals 180,000 for a total of 200,000 still in ending inventory, which should show up on your balance sheet. If we take our production cost minus our ending inventory, there's where we get our cost of goods sold numbers. Okay, 80,000 and 120, and if we subtract those from the revenues per um, product, you can see that cream has a gross margin of $80,000 and liquid skim has zero. All right, so why is that the case? Well, think back. What did we sell these for? The uh, cream is selling for $8 per gallon, and the liquid skim is selling for $4 per gallon. And under this physical measures example, our cost is $4 per gallon based on the physical measures. So that is why we have a 0% gross margin uh, of course, you need to calculate it on a total basis, 80,000 over the 400, or excuse me, 80,000 over the 280,000 is 28.6% gross margin over the period for both items together.